Hey, what's up, everybody? It's Brian here. What a crazy few weeks it's been. As you guys could probably tell, I haven't been posting as many videos as I would like, but we're going to change that right now. I'm posting a super short tutorial today uh, to answer a question that I found on Reddit, and it was simply this. How can we use EXR passes in After Effects? So let's get started. So we are in After Effects right now, and I saw this question on Reddit. It was simply this. How do you get EXR passes out of an EXR, a tiled EXR rendered. Now, for those of you that don't know what tiled EXR renders are, basically you're gonna have AOVs or render passes depending on what render package you use. And in this case, I have uh, this render right here of a motion design I've been working on over the last couple of weeks. Um, and I had the lighting or look dev artist that I recruited for this job, who is an amazing artist, by the way, you should check him out. I'm gonna link some of his info in the description below. Uh, he came up big for this project right here because I did not have time to render. Uh, so thanks to him, I'm able to pull this off. With that said, uh, you know, instead of having him, you know, create all these different render passes and send me all of these different AOVs, it's it's massive file sizes. So just put them all into one. And that's the beauty of using OpenEXR straight out of Pixar. And in this, there are channels. This is usually designed to go into a uh, composition software like Nuke. Uh, Flame can handle this really well. Even Fusion can be well with this but after effects itself is a very powerful compositing package but a lot of people overlook after effects because there's nuke where you can handle exr packages or render packages so much more efficiently after effects actually has built-in plugins uh, that you can use on the fly to make things work now before we do anything i want to switch to 32 bit and i want to click on this so i just hold down alt or option and i click on that by the way to go from 8 to 16 to 32. so i want to go to 32 bit i also want to come down here and i want to go to srgb uh, in this case, we want to go sRGB uh, 2.1, and then I want to linearize my working color space. Why am I doing this is because the renders are usually going to come at me from a zero to one linear color space, and that's how I want to work in this case. So uh, let's go ahead. OK, and now we're in linear color space. I've created a new composition with my footage here. And if you're on a slower machine, uh, even I have a powerful machine here, and you're going to notice it's going to chug. So let's keep that in mind. Uh, I'm going to switch to quarter here. Uh, it's a little bit noisy, but that's not the purpose of this tutorial. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to show you guys how to extract the channels. Now in this EXR, there are a number of channels. I'm going to show you guys what that is right now. So I'm going to use OpenFX console uh, from Video Copilot, and we're going to type in EX and there it is, Extractor. And it kind of have a little fun play on the name. EX and R are capitalized to kind of remind you this is for EXRs. So let's go ahead and add that. And then right off the bat, we have this layers and it will read all the channels that exist. And I had the renderer, Jonathan, actually give me all of these assets. So let's say here we are, you know, I'm working on a project and I want to edit, you know, in Z space. Uh, there's one way to do that. I have the Z space right here. Uh, there's also a Z depth that we can use uh, that'll make it much better. Um, there's a lot of plugins, but here we go. We have Z space. Let's say uh, I need the position pass. Here's my position pass. I need a normals pass. Here's my normals pass, so on and so forth. So you have all of your passes here if you ever need to use them. And then you, of course, can just pre comp these and then, you know, export them out. What I actually do is I will proxy. So I will take my files out like I, I just showed you right there. I will render them out into um, high res, uh, uncompressed, usually down to pro res, 16 bit color space. And then that way I'm working in 16, not 32 bit. And I have all those passes lined up and then I can use them to drive my effects because usually my end product is uh, 8 bit and I'm going to a color space, not in linear. But I like to composite in, in linear because that way when I break everything down, I add them back together, I'm going to come back to my beauty pass. So we're back in here. There's one more thing I want to show you guys too. You guys probably noticed that I have crypto assets here in your pass. What is crypto assets? I'm not mining cryptocurrency. Crypto assets is a newer ID mat. Now, ID mat has been around for a long time. Basically, you know, if I turn this off, every one of these light bright pegs that I have on this render, uh, they have they're, they're their own object. And so what you could do is whatever render package you have, you could tell these pegs to be their own ID. And that's what an ID mat historically used to be. But as you can tell, we have a super complex model here with a lot of different objects and you only have so many colors that you can use. So uh, Crypto Mat was developed to solve this problem. And we have one more plugin that I want to show you guys using FX console. Again, I'm actually going to type in Crypto Mat. And here we go. We have Crypto Mat. It reads it right off the bat. If you have a solid Crypto Mat out of whatever render package, in this case, Arnold. And here we go. We have 
we have what we need. And let's say maybe I want to make modifications to just this light bright peg. What I could do is just click it, hold down the shifts because it's it's actually clicking the face of the geometry. So I want the whole object. And there we go. Now I can work with just this peg and make whatever modifications I have by coming over here, creating a mat off of it, and then using a Luma mat underneath it. And now I'm just controlling that peg. Uh, another thing that we can also do here uh, in this case, let's say I didn't want the floor. In my final product, which you guys are going to see everywhere, you will notice that um, I didn't like the pegboard, even though I had asked for it explicitly. I ended up not using it. It's just it didn't fit for me for what I was trying to do. And so I used a crypto mat in this case. I just clicked on it. Uh, and I turned this into a mat only and I just did a Luma inverted and uh, what ended up happening is I got rid of that object and I was able to composite uh, without the floor at that point because I just used that crypto mount on every single one of my render passes when I proxied out. So let me know what you guys think below. This is a, a trick that I'll often overlooked. People are, oh, I got to buy Nuke or I got to buy some compositing package to pull the software. Honestly, you could do it in After Effects. I'll be the first one to tell you it's not the best way to work. Very slow. It's very inefficient. However, with the advent of GPU renders uh, for GPU RAM preview, um, it's getting better. It's not the worst. So yeah, please be sure to like this video if you like what you saw. Take a look around the channel and be sure to subscribe and hit that bell icon so you know when new content goes up and I'll see you in the next video.